Competition. Richmond taking on Casey, just waiting for players to be in their positions to get this one underway. The centre circle they are using today, just on the outer side, a touch to the middle. Dan Hill gets underway. Colours many moons ago, Dan. No, it's been <laughs> not quite right, but we'll have to reset. Free kick, yeah, been overturned. So, I thought it was a high contact in the in the tackle, but I'm not 100% sure. A kick with Cure Chuart. Applies the tackle in the middle to cause a stoppage. So ball up, neutral territory, both sides. We've travelled about a minute and a half in the first term here at Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. Brendan again had it, her hands on the footy momentarily. Dives on top of the mud and we'll get another stoppage. So we've got the, the two ruck women today going with the good old fashioned bash and crash jousting duel. Just running straight at each other. Old school. Get it up and down. Bad from the 23rd player there again, Seymour. Now Brennan swings it out wide, and Richmond again look to get on the attack through Monaghan. She goes up towards full forward. Ball gets over the back of the pack. It's a bouncing footy and wheeling onto her right boot is stall. Goes again and kicks it across the face of goal. Bouncing ball will go out over the line out of play. Had an opportunity there, but throw in 25 around from Richmond's attacking goal right forward pocket. Yeah, they could have been very dangerous for Casey there, but they were able to get back and apply that defensive pressure and um, save the goal. Shout out to Susanna uh, Brinkman, who's watching. Um, Pete's just moved his mobile Brandon phone away. off the base of the pack on the left. Way to the left. Just a minor score. Gee, she's lively around the footy. Katie Brennan, every right to rock the orange wheels today. First score for Richmond. They're 1-1. One, one. Katie's been caked in mud early on her right side. Looks like she's wearing skins. <laughs> she's not. Casey looked to come out of defensive 50. They've got the numbers at left half back, but Richmond come away. Ball towards full forward is a poor one. And Casey looking to cut it off and will switch the play. I think that might have been Kirkwood. And Casey coming towards the commentary side through the agency of Garner. Goes long, out wide. It's a two-on-two -two contest. Picked up quarter. She's dumped. You heard ball from the crowd. There's a few in at the QEO. Umpire wave play on as 
They tend to do so these days. They tend to just let it go that half a second more, which the fans are adjusting to in recent times and also playing the conditions. It is a little wetter here today at the QEO. It's soft underfoot as well. In addition to the mud in the middle, caught here with Shelley Heath. Ball spills free in favour of Casey. High ball in the Zanka direction. Got brought down. The umpire said all fair. Ball over the boundary line and out of play. At least call out our match analyst today. There's a fair bit of pressure being applied at the moment from the Richmond Tigers on the Casey Demons. Yeah, it's good good pressure uh, around the ground there from Richmond and it's what we expected. You're listening to the VFLW match of the day through RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio through WARFradio.com, the VFL app, and a live video stream today available through our Facebook page. Search, search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. A scrum occurred from the boundary throw-in, and we'll get another stoppage corner of the centre square. Broadcast side favouring Casey. It's the closest they've been to their attacking end of the ground in the first five minutes of the match today. Just paddled along the carpet there from Windbanks. Ball top of the 50, it goes inside, comes out the back mark, is it paid? It is. Casey Sheriff takes the mark on a slight angle about 20 metres out from goal, Elise Collette. And Casey Sheriff was one of the players we um, we mentioned in the pre-game as someone who's Melbourne listed, but very young and very inexperienced. So it's a great opportunity for her to... Um, Slot the first goal of the match. Been brought around on a 45 degree angle. Breeze going this direction in the opening term and she makes no error with it. Straight over the top of the goal. Umpires had five and a half minutes gone. Opening term. Casey one straight six. Richmond one behind on the VFLW match of the day for round eight. Good goal. Good positivity after being under pressure early. Yeah, great start. Great mark from Casey there. Uh, Sheriff, I should say. K um, Casey Sheriff. And it was good from Casey just to work the ball down, out, and then into their 50. And it doesn't have to be one set, one coast to, easy coast to coaster. It's just, they've just got to get it forward and create the opportunity. Ball back in the centre of the ground of the QEO. Off radio coming to you live from Bendigo in central Victoria. We go everywhere and anywhere. Pete Holden's done the States. He does different hemispheres. <laughs> We'll just do a different part of Victoria for today. Again, Richmond to take away out of the centre. It was a poor handball defensively from Ben Velzen. Turned over. Richmond do have the numbers. They work it towards their forward pocket, although the ball is on the deck and in dispute now. 25 out from their attacking goal. Brennan comes in to lend a hand. Umpire lets it go a little longer. Oh, this feels like a dive on it. No, it's come out. And Casey again from the base of the pack managed to force it clear. They've done well when the ball slows down. Over the back was last for Richmond. She got the hands away. Here's the one with the wheels, Grace Egan. Yeah, not a great first kick, Grace. Got to improve on that if you're going to wear the fluoros. Little ball out wide here from Rebecca Miller. She gets it inside 50. Fist it away. Good defence from Casey. They've stood resolute early here in this one. Ball will be locked up now. And again, it's been let go by the umpire. Waves play on. Ball to the top of the square is a good one. It's over the back of the pack yet again. Numbers do come back for Casey, but Brennan on the left boot around the corner. And it's just oh. away to the left. Slammed it into the post. Minor score. They're big posts here at the QEO. <laughs> just the minor score. So two behinds, all to Brennan for Richmond. They trail, by, they trail Casey one straight six by four points. Jacobson in the back pocket brings it towards the halfback flank on the broadcast side where the ball is cut off. Hannah McLaren takes the mark. Just outside attacking 50, searches for options. It's a topo kick, which is effective. Mark taken by Jenna Colwell. Decides to centre the footy to stall on the lead, who takes the mark. 20 metres out. Make that 25 metres out for Taylor Stall. So that fat side kick, if you're willing to go there, tends to be on. And it was a fairly congested forward 52 to say to be able to find that space. Good thing about the fat side kick in women's footy is you tend to be on a much better angle than in the men's. It's almost straight in front. Stall comes in and puts it through for Richmond's first here at the QEO. 
They move to 1-2-8. Casey, one straight six. We're about to tick over the nine-minute mark in the opening term. Here on RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio across Melbourne through WARFradio.com and the VFL app if you're after an audio stream. Today for a video stream, head to Facebook.com and search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. Our match analyst today is Elise Collette. Yeah, great work there from Richmond. It, it all started with the um, the intercept from McLaren after um, uh, being able to push Zanker out of the way and put her in a bad position. And it was a good set of kicks in, finding the correct target, and um, they've kicked truly in, uh, back in front. Another hit out in the middle for Seymour, and again Richmond get the takeaway towards half forward. Jakes gets on the right, put Jacks I should say, goes up towards Stahl, who marks literally unopposed, or managed to Edge her opponent out, and she marks right half forward. Probably just get the journey from there. She'll kick from about 38, 39 on a 45 degree angle. Right in front of the change rooms that adjoin the swimming pool here at the Queen Elizabeth Oval in Bendigo. Comes in, gets very close to the player on the mark, hits it nicely. A little bit of a 9 iron to the line, touched on the line. Oh. And Shoveled through for a point. I think that, I think it might have been Paterno who just come onto the ground. It's always a nice way to do it. Run straight from the bench, saunter forward, and shark one off the front of the pack. But only the minor score. So one three nine, Richmond. Of course, this is their home game today. And Casey one straight six. Richmond with the alignment with Bendigo in women's footy. As Jacobson played on out of the goal square. Again, the ball to the halfback flank wasn't the best. Garner. Able to shovel the handball out. Shelley Heath with speed. Lost control of the footy. Desperate stuff here from Casey. They're trying to use it by hand. Now they've coughed it up. Brennan, high ball towards half forward. Jacques chasing after it. Has to apply the tackle in the end. Should cause a stoppage here at half forward for the Tigers. It did well after Casey looked to break away there, release Colette. Yeah, it was a great intercept from Katie Brennan. The ball didn't quite bounce. Uh, the right way for a teammate, but um, they'll be hoping to try and push it forward here again. Kick McCure, Chewett on that outer side, goes long inside 50, and they get another mark through Imogen Milford. Probably just beyond her range. She stabs it. Jacobson cutting across, takes the mark for Casey Demons in defence. They trail by three points as we just tick over the 11-minute mark in the opening term. Jacobson, left back pocket, decides to switch the play. Oh, kicks it straight to the one in the two, which was stall for Richmond. She wants to go quickly. Umpire says, come around on your mark, please. Stall rocking the, the headgear and the ponytail. She's not built like a key forward, is she? It's just sort of an in-between. Bit of Jordan McGowie. Comes in. 40 out. Kicks a good old-fashioned flat punt to the line. Knocked away off hands into the left forward pocket. Richmond do have the numbers. Little ball around the corner from Laura Bailey. Snap on goal, goes across the face. And Brennan had a chance to mark, but in the end it bounced through for just the one behind. So another minor score for Richmond, 1-4-10. Casey, one straight six. And I've just got this from Peter Holden on the boundary. He's got some good stats going on. Time in forward half, Richmond, 97%. Extraordinary. <laughs> Love your work, Pete. Yeah, Brody Mathematics, I don't know whether they're completely accurate. It's going to start saying thanks for that sodas. That's how, that's how inside it was, insightful it was. <laughs> <laughs> Jacobson kicks it towards the halfback flank on the broadcast side. Once again, Casey in a whole lot of trouble. Birchall applying the tackle. Zanker under pressure, released the handball. It's a traffic jam, though, up against the boundary line. And we'll get a ball up. 1-4-10 Richmond leading Casey, one straight six. We've got seven minutes left to play. Opening term here on RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio. Zanka, her kick smothered. Doesn't go over the boundary line just yet. Opportunity opens up for Colwell. Handball into traffic, no good. Tigers jump on the footy. Emerging with it is Egan. Did a little dance to get around. Traffic was tackled and she got the kick away. That's why she's got the fluoros. Yep. It was classy. She can do that. Hannah Birchall just outside 50. Goes in the Katie Brennan direction. Used her body well. She fancy herself here. Decides she's going to do the team thing. Pop it up. Stall on the lead. Had two to beat. Brought the ball to ground. Was she taken out of the contest? Uh, Pushing the back. Good umpiring. Free kick to go the way of the Casey attempt. Demons. 
unrealistic attempt. I love in footy how literally nine out of the ten rules are something about the spirit of the game. <laughs> Work the rest out. <laughs> Poor exit. Terrible exit. Straight onto the chest of Laura Bailey and she'll hurt you. Well, always pointing at the sticks and wanted to have a shot. Goes in short. Wasn't a great ball. Katie Brennan crashed the pack. Ball to the top of the goal square. Richmond do have the numbers. The ball has just slowed down and lost its momentum. The umpire will be forced to call for it. And the throw up. 20 out from Richmond's attacking goal. They lead by four points. We have six minutes remaining in the first term. Ball up. Ibrahim Hovering was caught by Dyson. We'll get a ball up. Forward pocket out of side. Richmond by four points. And it's dropped about three degrees here at Bendigo's QEO. Bailey, raving the contest, decided oh, to hands. give the handball off to Brennan. A little dinky kick is good enough for a goal for her first of the day. And Richmond finally able to capitalise Elise Collette. Yeah, very true. Great uh, reward for effort there. They were just keep constantly attacking, attacking. They just weren't quite able to get the uh, the goals there for a while, but uh, they finally have. And Katie Brennan's doing what Katie Brennan does best. Looks like she's being shifted forward uh, after starting in the middle. Part of the rotations, no doubt, for Richmond. Just waiting for the scoreboard to tick over here at Queen Elizabeth Oval to give you a score update. Two four. Got to get the advertising in, Coxie. Two four. We don't have that here on uh, Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. Of course we do. And the scoreboard's come to a stop. So two four sixteen plays one straight six. Could have bailed you out there, but score. Yeah, I know. You, you made, made me pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Dan Hill. Oh, I love it. All up and down in the centre of the ground. Got to love a bit of by play in the country <laughs> box. Good old fashioned stitch up. <laughs> Ball's tossed up again. That's a lovely little hit out from Cole. While they've really controlled the ruck so far, Richmond. Ooh. Did a dangerous tackle there. Umpire was blindsided. It was a good old-fashioned face plant, face slide. Straight into the mud, too. Underneath that one. I think there was Shelly Heath again. She just, she's only she's knee-high to a grasshopper. And she is in and under everything. You can tell Casey play a lot at Casey's. They play those uh, in-close hand conditions really well. And again, they're first to the footy. And it'll be a 50-meter oh. penalty. Not throwing it back on the full. Oh. Casey are off. That's Bit harsh. No, good umpiring. Throw it back. I'm Bit sick of that. Who's free kick is it garbage? It, the player moving onto the mark moved into the way after the ball was Bad thrown. Bad luck. Work it out. Chantal Emerson. She'll take the free kick. It's, it's about a 37 metre penalty. She'll kick for a 40 out straight in front. It's not a big ground here at the QEO. Lovely looking kick. Sausage roll. <laughs> Absolutely straight through the middle in the end. The goal boy did a bit of work to the left. But it was a low ball, but it was enough. 2 4 16 plays two straight 12. The D's. They work it back to four points. And yes, maybe a little bit controversial on the 50 metre penalty, but get the ball back to the person whose free kick it is. It's pretty nah, simple. I'd, no. That decision was about as good as the umpire's uniforms today. <laughs> Give it a rinse. <laughs> no, I'm not a fan. Nothing is that bad. I'm not a fan of the grey. I like, I'm sort of I know, I know. now because you can't really see them. It's good. They I, blend in. I, I know it's to avoid the clash with the yellow on the Richmond Guernsey, but go back to the old white if you're going to eat. No one wears what apart from Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> Some balls all wrapped up. On top of the muddy cricket pitch here at uh, QEO. And it's real mud too. It is. They're gonna it's going to stain. <laughs> Hate to be the property steward. Monaghan, topo kick away from the contest. Ball to ground. And immediately it's all wrapped up. Trying to work out whether that's Sheriff with the number 18 or whether it's another number that's been caked in mud for the Casey Demons. I think it's Ben Velzen. I think it's supposed to be a three, Coxie. Yeah, Don't quote uh, me. Off the ball holding. Three to Casey. They have won the inside game. Easy early, Alice, haven't they? They're just better inside. Yeah, they've got those um, those in and under players like um, we were talking about Shelley Heath before. She almost gets the mark there. Monaghan waiting out the back, roved the contest, puts it into a bit of space. Broadcast side allows Grace Campbell to run onto it. Did well to get around traffic, got around two, and then puts it out on the full. All the good work undone. Uh, we'll get a boundary throw in, and it is. Uh, 
It is Sheriff that's come from the ground caked in mud. That is a number 18. <laughs> Jeez, it, uh... a shower at quarter time. Good grab. Richmond look to repel. I'll have, I'll have my first go at this one, Coxie. <laughs> McCaw chop. Nailed it. Up towards half forward. You can do Brennan. it for the rest of the day then. On the chest. Goes a little right. Chipping pill to stall. Champagne football from the Tigers. Well, that was pretty poor checking there from Casey. She... There's not much you can do about that. Well, have a look at how many players are inside oh, no, their defensive 50. Pass. Yeah, I think you might be on there, Coxie. Cause... They're, not, they're not being very accountable at the moment. All on her own is Cody Jakes. And she's on a slightly poor angle, probably 45 degrees at left half forward. Yeah, be careful because Laura Bailey's just hovering at the top of the goal square by herself. Cody Jakes is thinking about it too. Jax, I'll get it right eventually. In she comes, away to the right, terrible kick at goal. The crowd right behind it, but to the front, Laura Bailey, who you spoke of, Coxie, couldn't get the hands away. Another chance, hacked off the ground from, I think it might have been Hannah Ibrahim. Now kicked defensively, only as far as the inked up Monaghan. She goes back towards goal. There's a lot of ink out there today. <laughs> Might be a world record for the VFL. Sure, sure it's not mud. What a ink. Well, that'll be, that'll be more mud than ink by the end of the day. She misses away to the left. They push the margin out to five points. 17 plays, 12. And that'll be quarter time. Long. So, quarter time, after the longest siren in the history of football, <laughs> uh, Richmond 2517, or maybe the longest siren in the history of football, was down in Tassie when they couldn't hear it. It's a kill to play pre -o. Jeez, I hold a grudge, don't I? <laughs> uh, the Casey Demons, two straight 12. Good first quarter, all in all. Uh, Richmond obviously had the territory battle, but this one's in the balance. Yeah, and if they were able to, to convert even like two of those behinds into goals, it uh, be a very different ball game, but kudos to Casey. They're, although they struggled qu quite a number of times to get past uh, their defensive half 50, when the ball was closer to goal, the defence stood up quite strong despite that um, uh, last passage of play there. Making the most of their opportunities, I think you could say, for the Casey Demons. Their two goal kickers so far, Emerson and Sheriff for Richmond. Katie Brennan has one, as does Taylor Stahl. 2-5-17, Richmond leading the Casey Demons. Two straight 12. You're listening to the VFL Women's Match of the Day on RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio across Melbourne through WARFradio.com, the VFL app, and our... Uh, live video stream today available through facebook.com. Search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. We'll take a break here from Bendigo's QEO, where it is Richmond 2517, leading Casey to straight 12. 48 matches, 10 teams. It's the fight for cricket's holy grail. When it's the World Cup, when it's a big event, they turn up. When it's as big as the World Cup, RSN 927 ramps up the team. And they put in a performance, and boy, have they done that today. Whitey. Our commitment to the World Cup is world class. On the Breakfast Club, on the Late Show, and on Sports Overnight. Former Australian players John Hastings and Cat White will be with us throughout the Cup. Pakistan side with their Champions Trophy result in 2017 yeah. are a dangerous team. Embedded with the Aussie team, Vice-Captain Alex Carey, a regular guest. G'day, Alex. Yeah, guys, how you going? Following every Cup match, cricket writer Adam Collins. The atmosphere was astonishing. They were sitting with the fans down there. And we're proud to roll out the final word podcast. Direct from England, just after 5.30 every morning inside the breakfast bar. Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon wrapping up all the overnight play. Shakib got the man of the match for his bowling was the key just to really squeeze South Africa and derail them through the middle. All the way to the world. Cup final. We're about the game because we love our cricket. Inside every edition of Winning Post, great stories, expert previews and comprehensive form guides for race meetings right across the nation, right across the weekend. That's why Winning Post is Australia's top-selling racing paper. Grab your Winning Post at your newsagents every Friday. Even Hey guys, I'm Jess. And I'm Lisa from the Veronica Cares for Rad. Rad. Recording artists, actors and athletes against drink driving. What does it mean to be a designated driver? It means you're the friend who's agreed not to drink, not the person who's had the least to drink. It's cool to do and it shows you care about your friends. If you screw up just once, then your life changes forever. Face it, their lives are in your hands. So why don't you and your friends take it in turns to be the designated driver when you go out? 
You'll make the road safer for all of us. RSN Carnival 2 is the Welcome back to Bendigo's QEO here on uh, RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio through WARFradio.com and the VFL app. Uh, we are at quarter time between Richmond and the Casey Demons and we are just talking off air, Elise Collette. It's actually been a very good game of football. Look, hang on, let me turn you on. That might help. Yeah, you're one, that would one, certainly help. You're one of those ones. <laughs> Try that again. I'm all tangled here in the commentary box. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it has been a very good game. It's very, very contested, very even. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see which way it goes we're this gonna, second quarter. We're going to give these wireless mics another go. Pete Holden down on the boundary. Hopefully it works this time. Hey. There you go. Just was in the huddle with the Casey Demons listening to Damien Keeping, solely focusing on defence, talking about take the easy option. Look at holding on to the ball longer and don't be afraid of the stoppage. They want the game played on their terms, even if it's at a slower pace. Yeah, there you go. And that's what they'd be hoping for because they didn't get too many opportunities in that first quarter. But when they did, they were able to use it to their advantage. Yeah, and one particular moment that I'll, I'll um, raise is is the time where I believe it was Jacobson was in the far pocket and switch kicked it while it was still in the 50. Um, that's not the easier option because it's you get taught at a very young age to um, to not switch kick in defence or kick, or kick across goal in general. So yeah, they'll yeah, don't make it harder for yourself. It's just not worth it. No. Lower the eyes, use use the targets to your advantage. Uh, for Richmond, it'll be interesting. We've sent Dan Hill down to uh, ground level to hear what Tom Hunter had to say because they had a lot of the footy in that opening term but just couldn't capitalise going forward. And when they were having a shot, they've kicked 2-5 in that term. So it should be yeah. much further in front than what they are. Yeah, quite a number of those behinds was just being pushed over the line. It was um, not about five or six players within like two meter radius just in the goal square. So yeah, they'll be, um, they could, could very well be further in front. As uh, I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I just copped a uh, little drip of precipitation, I think might be coming our way here at uh, Bendigo's QEO. The clouds are getting a little grayer to the left-hand side of our broadcast position. After it was beautiful and sunshine a little earlier today here in Bendigo, it was absolutely perfect. We do have a slight breeze favouring the right-hand side of our broadcast position. This round eight clash between Richmond and the Casey Demons live through RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio across Melbourne through WARFradio.com, the VFL app. And today as well, we have a live video stream available through Facebook. Head to facebook.com forward slash W A R F radio or search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. Dan Hill's back in the box after being out at the Richmond huddle. What did Tom Hunter have to say? Tom said we're winning the clearances, but we're not really doing anything with it. So let's try and get some advantage from the stoppage. That was the message. Ball up and down in the centre of the ground. Another huge hit out for Richmond from the middle. Seymour smashed it forward about 35 metres. Going in and under was Shelley Heath. Couldn't get the clean hands out. Then she's dumped. Umpire again waving play on. The tackles are being let go early. Ball goes inside Richmond's attacking 50. Knocked away from Clayton. In fact, down there it was Colwell. Richmond now working towards the top of their goal square. Goes under the base of a pack. Umpire circles. Trying to let it go and now decides the call for it. So it'll be a bounce. Top of the goal square. Richmond again get the centre break. Lead by five points. Opening moments. Second term. Top of the goal square. Getting caught there was Colwell. And the, ump the umpire pays a free kick the way of Casey. That's a flat punt. Yeah, and very dangerous. Sitting underneath it was Paterno. Slight angle. There is a breeze going that end. Really enforcing the angle today. Oh, yeah. The umpires. It is a fairly wide ground here at Queen Elizabeth Oval. Shoot. And just to the right-hand side. 
Good attempt. Serves more. 2 6 18 Richmond. They lead by a major. Casey, two straight 12. A minute and a half into the second term here on RSN Carnival 2 and live through Facebook today with a video stream. Clean the restart for Casey. It's not a great one. She goes towards right half back. Richmond attacking the city end in this term. Umpire says it's not going anywhere and will bounce it at half forward with Richmond in attack. Going up in the ruck here is Jenna Colwell. Won it down. Jacobson goes back and gets it. Jacobson, I should say. Gets a little handball over the top to Clayton, who's dumped. The umpire says not coming out of there either, so I'll throw it up again. Quickly throws it up. Throw a blanket over about 18 players here. Jacobson went underneath. And umpire says we'll try again. Get us out of some trouble here, Coxie. You're the clearance king. Don't put that pressure. I need, I need your help. I shouldn't really give it to you after you stitched me up in the first quarter. Casey, <laughs> they're going to get oh, caught there high. He is Coxie, superstar. <laughs> a free kick going the way of the Demons. They get a clearing kick towards Zankers. Center wing out of side. Another long ball in the Sheriff direction. Got caught behind. Ball to ground. Zanker following up her kick. Tried to get a handball away. Kick McCure Chewett. On that halfback flank, a dinky kick, no good for her. Trying to take a bounce was Emerson. That was ambitious from her. Then got clothesline. Good old-fashioned house of stoush set up there. That was just off the ropes, arm out, down. So she gets the free kick. Still re recovering a bit after getting clobbered. She'll send a long one inside 50 here for Casey. Good work. There's a bit of holding going on, and a free kick will go the way of the Demons. It's going to be three inside 50s for three goals. She slots this. I'll put the moz on now, but... Amanda McDonoghue will take the kick. I think I heard in the pre-game from the Richmond coach that they're, that Casey is super efficient. Are they the words I heard? I th well, given that uh, three goals from three entries... <laughs> That's the definition of. Exactly right. And it's all square here at QEO. It's eight scoring shots to three. And yet both sides are 18 points. Yeah, we were talking earlier about um, Casey making the most of their chances, and that's what they're certainly doing. Like, for, for most of the, like, 99% of the quarter so far, it's been in Richmond's 50, but one passage of passage of play down the wing, and then, boom, Casey goal. Sort of like a 2 on 5 as well for, I think who it was over there, it might have been Zanka. Mm. Two on five, sort of halved the two on five, and that was enough. Oop. Casey go the wrong way. Well, that's a good old-fashioned <laughs> setup. Forgot which quarter it was. The ball from Monaghan now for Richmond goes in towards it. Their first a chance for an attacking foray, Casey, out of the stoppage. So I'm so confused I went the wrong way. That's a uh, Chloe Malloy decision that was made there after she ran, ran the wrong way for about 30 metres the other week at Preston City Oval. All I can say is... And they is kicked it a further 20. All I can say is if they were playing for my side, that would have been a two dollar fine. <laughs> should, be, should be 10. <laughs> All out of bounds, left forward pocket. Thrown back in. The ruck work is done by Jenna Colwell. She can't get it to the front now. She's trying to force it out of there. Throw a blanket over about 18 players. And I reckon this will be two or three bounces to me, Coxie, and then I'll just hand it over and keep your record intact. <laughs> so we're about 40 metres out from Richmond's attacking goal. Scores are level 18 each. Two six plays three straight. Oh, no. Put the moz on. Out of the pack. Jax towards full forward. More chance for Paterno. Juggling, juggling. Had one arm free. Just comes clear as the umpire was about to call for it. And now there will be a bounce. Pretty much top of the goal square. Maybe slightly in, in between the big goal posts and the behind post in the right forward pocket. We've played six minutes in the second term. Which is still pretty big, the uh, behind post here at QEO. So that's a goal post in most local grounds. It's <laughs> yes, it extraordinary. Is. Very fat posts here as well. And a free kick will go the way of Casey by the looks of things. Got that count covered at the moment. Six to one. Didn't help Collingwood. They won the free kick count 27 to 11. But absolutely smacked. Now, what's the umpire's getting the book out. So... Numbers are being taken. Colwell... Now, I can only assume it's something to do with language and the way that she was talking to the umpire... Because a free shouldn't kick be was 50. given. Shouldn't it be 50? 
Well, wait and see, because the ball's in, currently in the umpire's... Well, was in her hands until she took the book out. I reckon it is going to be a 50-metre penalty. Uh, back to the car no. square. I guess it will depend on if it is a language being what was actually said. Garner puts it, it into the... You're a such and such. Free kick out six to one, you such and such. And Jacobson... That's how it goes, isn't it? No uh, comment. Jacobson puts it down the, the boundary line. Mark taken here by Bent Felsen. Controlled footy here from the Demons. Okay, well, it's the way that they've got their score at the moment so far today. And Richmond will run out of room in the hands of a kick. McCure, Chewett. 2 6 18, Richmond. They're level with the Casey Demons, who are three straight 18. Got about 12 and a half minutes left to play. In this second term, again, Richmond having it largely inside their half of the ground. Brennan pops it into the pocket, searching for stall, bounced away from her. Ball close to the boundary line once again, trapping it in there as Cody Jacks up against the fence. The umpire says, give it to me, I'll ball it up. Katie Brennan in a Richmond jumper. Yes, that is correct for those of you at home. It's come across from the Bulldogs and is... Going to play for Richmond in the AFLW next season. Comes from her kick out of the pack. It's a quick kick. And it's another behind. I think she's got about four. Got plenty of behinds. It's way to the left. So they lead by that solitary margin. And even though it's Richmond's alternative strip, I think it actually suits Katie Brennan. 19 to 18. Coxie's fashion tips love it. Terrible restart. <laughs> they haven't been great from the restart, Casey. Straight down the aforementioned and now reported Jenna Colwell. She will tuck the mouth guard into the sock and go back and have a shot at goal from 40 out. Interesting approach, short approach. Opposing ruck woman on the mark. She goes for the, the stitch up setup kick. That was always on. It was, was never having a shot despite the mouth guard work. Well sold, Jenna. Turnover, back pocket, Casey. With numbers, clearing kick, downfield free kick. I think it might have been Harriet Corder down there. She was absolutely dumped. And Casey will have it right half back. McDonoughhue goes short to Jacobson, takes the mark. Still on half back out of side for Casey. This next kick that they've had a couple of issues with today. That one's okay. Mark taken by Johnson. Still on half back out of side. Now they load up. Long ball. Sheriff direction coming late, impacting the contest was Emerson. Falls at the feet of Brennan. Decides to do it all herself. Goes towards Stall. She was caught behind McLean, who sees the ball over the boundary line and out of play. Our match analyst today, Elise Collette. We were talking about um, the poor kickouts from Casey. It's been an issue all afternoon that they have struggled to get it um, past their, their half back line. So they've They've got to make sure that they take that extra second to make sure that their, uh, their choice of kick is correct. Casey again from the coalface get the takeaway. And this time they decide to go a little more central towards centre half back. Big pack forms around it. And Casey can't get this clear. Jess Kennedy in there for Richmond. And also Brennan. Be tossed up right on the edge of the square. Attacking side for Richmond. Unopposed in the ruck was Seymour. And held out of the ruck was Bridie Winbanks. And she'll take the free kick at centre-half back. In fact, it might be Zanka. That's, yeah, that's Zanka. Uh, Bridie's finally having a break after pretty much rucking the entire game so far. Zanka spears one in. It's a good pass. Lands on the chest of Elisa Johnson. She'll get 50 for restricted area. Those of you who say it's a bad rule, it's a fantastic rule. Get over yourself. Players have got to be more aware. Get out of the way. Stop being the dumb football stereotype. Switch on. Johnson towards full forward. Their fourth inside 50. Can it be a fourth goal for Melbourne? Ball at the base. They do have some numbers here, but the ball is bubbling around. Comes out the back now. A chance for Garner. But it's turned over, and Richmond will look to repel. McLaren 
In the harder defensive 50, it was a risky kick. Heath tried to lay claim to it. Richmond emerged with the footy. Still on half back. Heath doing incredibly well. Should be rewarded and is. And she didn't realise she had the free kick. It's like a lion and a wildebeest. <laughs> Shelley Heath. Been impressive today so far for Casey. Pops it up inside, attacking 50 off hands. Hog caught. Comes out. Legs. Cord, nah. Play on. Monaghan now dishes the handball. Keck McCure Chewitt's in a bit of trouble. Laying on the tackle is Emerson. We'll get a ball up. Inside 50 here for Casey. They're three straight 18, trailing Richmond 2 7 19. Eight minutes left on the clock, second term. Winbank straight back into the ruck. Alice, you had got a 30 second breather and then back to your task, thank you. Ball comes out the back. Richmond outside their defensive 50 towards Colwell, who will be paid the holding free kick against Zanka. Wants to go quickly, goes out wide towards Jess Kennedy through her hands. Then she decides to go with the Texas wedge towards the wing. Yep. On the burst, it was Jakes. Couldn't get it clear now, wrapped up. Umpire will call for it right on centre wing down in front of us. We'll have a throw up. Shelley Heath will throw it back to the umpire. One point lead to Richmond. Played 13 minutes second term on Wharf Radio. As Casey looked to win the clearance this time. Good tackle laid on by Grace Egan. Ball pops out momentarily. The umpire says push in the back. Free kick will go the way of the Tigers. Centre wing broadcast side. So even up the count. Grace Campbell, ball in her hands. And it's going to be a 50 metre penalty for the player encroaching the mark. And Grace Campbell wants to move as quickly as she can. The player's going to stand the mark though, so she wasn't allowed to play on. There's only one thing they've got to fix for that rule. The umpire's got to turn around and not run backwards. It's hard to run that fast backwards. Ball popped into the pocket. Casey should have enough time to clear. Garner coughs it up. Bailey going to send it back in towards the forward pocket. Big fist from Zanka pushes it over the boundary line and out of play. Our match analyst today is Elise Collette. Yeah, that, that, was all, that one was always going to be hard for Casey to try and clear. It was about a maybe four or five on one. So, yeah, they've just got to try and get that extra player in for the support. Zones are in, yes. Yeah, they hustle back for the zone to make sure they've got five in their half, Casey. Ball to the front of the pack. Richmond a chance here through Bailey. Kick on goal. Hits that big fat right goalpost. They have come into play on several occasions today. Stretches the margin though. Out to two points. 2-8-20 two, Richmond. Casey three straight 18. As the locals work overtime to get the footy back into play. Had about three attempts. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't pretty. <laughs> Jacobson will look to send it towards the outer side. Decides to take a bounce as she comes out of the defensive goal square. High ball, two on one, favouring Richmond. Make that three on one. And the free kick will go their way. The Tigers, it's in the hands of Paterno. Just outside attacking 50. On the outer side of the ground. Wants to come inboard with the kick, but in the end had to go long to the goal square. Out the back. AC have numbers. If they're able to take it cleanly, they weren't. Happy to see it th through, though, Georgia McLean. Well sold. Well don't fumbled. Don't want to get done. Yeah, the fumble fake. Don't want to get De done for a rush behind. Deliberately fumbled. The restart. This time, Casey decided to try something different. Why not kick it to Zanka? Surely that's a mark up by yeah, Not paid. Said it was I, off hands. I would have thought that was a mark, but each to their own, as they say. Not woman in front. Seems to have died. Well, I thought she, thought she had enough on it anyway. Um, it's been very good, Zanka. We'll toss back in. She'll do the ruck work on this occasion. Edges her opponent out. Does her own ruck work. Why not? If you're doing it all, just do it all. Gets the defensive kick. Well, it's only as far as McCourt shot. Goes up towards half forward. Off hands. Casey do have the Ooh. numbers. Good tackle laid on. Egan goes in to help out for Richmond. Gets the hands clear. Interesting little kick around the corner, scragged away. Now a chance for Tamara Smith. She gets it up towards full forward on the burst stall. Couldn't take the mark. All inside attacking 50 for Richmond. Little hack around the corner from Hannah Ibrahim. Now Bailey. Kick it goal. Bouncing ball is there. And it's gone through. It was a lovely finish. Richmond player down. Behind the 
play. Is that Hannah Birchall, I think? She's in yeah, some real trouble. Yeah, it looks trouble. like it, will, it is Birchall. It's crossed from Geelong this season. But, meantime, it is 3-9-27 Richmond as Birchall is attended to. Casey, three straight 18. And really, they get their rewards for efforts there, Alice. Yeah, and um, despite... Um, the higher percentage of the time that it has been in Richmond's 50, that's their first goal of the quarter. So, finally some um, reward on the scoreboard for all their effort. Who was that last goal kicker? Bailey, Laura Bailey. Cool. Looks like right leg. Virtual. She's up on her feet and, well, she's being carried to the bench. Yeah, by the she looks like she's not putting any pressure on that right leg. So, yeah. And she's in a fair bit of discomfort looking at uh, her facial expression as she comes from the ground. Not positive. We're just waiting for her to come from the ground. So we'll get a restart shortly here at Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. Round 8, Swiss Wellness of EFLW Action Live through RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio across Melbourne through WARFradio.com and the VFL app. And also today, we have a live video stream through our Facebook page. Search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio as we restart in the middle. Just over two minutes left on the clock in the second term. Zanka fired the handball out. The kick from Emerson was smothered. They get another chance, though, to reload towards half forward. Mark taken by Hogg. She goes up the corridor. It was a good kick in the coordinate direction, just couldn't lay claim to it. Richmond get a hurry kick away from the contest towards the broadcast side. Front position is Miller. Well, that was nimble. Yeah, was able to work herself out of trouble pretty well. And a good kick, good vision to Jenna Colwell, defensive side of the broadcast wing. Colwell with her awkward kicking style, loads it up, goes towards right half forward. Ball gets over the back of the pack, stall slaps it on. Smart. Was smart, but unfortunately the follow-up from Imogen Milford wasn't terrific. Kick was smothered over the line out of play. Needed to give the hands over the top to Brennan. Throw in 65 around from Richmond's attacking goal. 80 seconds left in the first half. It's the Tigers by nine points. And we're going to get a reset, I think. Now, is it due to who ruck nominated for the ruck? Of, uh, confusion. Let let it go from the umpire, even though two players nominated for Richmond. So throw back in, and there's going to be another whistle for holding and a free kick to go the way of Zanka. It's just on top, Zanka. Impressive. Could use it too. And I got a feeling she's from this part of the world too. Yeah, it might. Yeah, I think. I think you're right. We'll double check that at half time as the ball's going to dribble close to the boundary line. She was on it here again, Zanka. Applied the tackle. Richmond able to get a kick towards the top of the goal square. Pack flies, came off hands to Kennedy. Puts it into Ibrahim. Gives the quick handball to Paterno. Hurried kick, hurried snap on the boot. Will go through for another minor score for the Tigers. They've got a 10 point lead as we head towards half time here at Queen Elizabeth Oval. 3 10 28 place. Three straight, 18. And Jacobson has a look at the scoreboard. Tie the shoelace. Just, uh, That'll do us. Yep. <laughs> Smart. Oozes class. And what did the stat, though? Kicked it out on the full, I reckon. Yep, <laughs> she did too. <laughs> straight to the boundary umpire who was standing out there. Half time at Queen Elizabeth Oval. It is Richmond, 3-10-28 to Casey, three straight 18, or look at it from another way, 13 scoring shots to three, and Richmond only have a 10-point lead. Oh, that, things could be very different if um, even, like, two of those points were actually goals. So, yeah, things could get very interesting um, come the second half. Yeah, I think it was... They were, they were worth their lead then, Richmond, obviously. Went in at quarter time and not a whole lot to show for it, and they came out in the second quarter, and they were a lot better... Passing the ball around the ground in that in that term, so things starting to come together for them. But yeah, they've got they've got a good opposition in Casey. If you if you lapse or, or lose one out the back, they can they can hurt you. And of course, Zank has been very good for Casey, and and also um, also had a few up the ground that have that have worked over time in in uh, Heath and and others that are, that are on top. Winbanks has been okay in the ruck, so 
Certainly not a walkover. Casey well and truly in this one. Our goal kickers so far for Casey, Emerson, Sheriff and McDonoghue. Whilst for Richmond, we have Katie Brennan with one, Ailey and Stahl with their goals. Sees the score at halftime, which has been confirmed. 3-10-28 plays three straight 18 here in round eight. Action between Richmond and the Casey Demons live from Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. You're listening to it through RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio, WARFradio.com, the VFL app. And today we're bringing you live a live video stream through Facebook, facebook.com forward slash uh, Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. And what we might do while we go to the halftime break, we might put it out there. If anyone's got a question uh, about the game so far that you'd like to ask, just uh, add a comment on the Facebook page, Pete Holden. Yeah, all they have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash WARF radio. That's facebook.com forward slash WARF radio. Post in the comments section. We already had one shout out from a listener who's listening in Cooktown, far north Queensland. Ask us a question and uh, we'll try the very best to answer it there for you. It's uh, the service we provide here on Women's Australian Rules Football or Radio. I'll make it up, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and try something. and tell the difference. That's the game. <laughs> we'll do the answers at full time. <laughs> the prize is <laughs> nothing. absolutely nothing. We'll take a break here from Queen Elizabeth Oval. Ten point lead to Richmond at half time. When footy's done and dusted, the weekend footy wrap, Monday mornings at 10. It's the round in review from the footy punter's point of view. Andrew Cuse and Adam White deliver the weekend footy wrap, Monday mornings at 10, and then on podcast. What a week we had on the Late Show. Well, first there was Monday, then there was Tuesday, then there was... No, seriously, we had a great week. Great guests, good fun, the Culinary World Cup. We did it all this week, and if you missed any of it, you can check it out on the podcast part of the website. Make sure you do that. Enjoy your weekend. I'm going to rest up and then be back uh, with a vengeance. 11 o'clock, Monday night. Hope to see you then. On RSN 927. The Breakfast Club. Pretty much golfing royalty. Jan Stevenson. Could have almost been the first lady in the White House, potentially, <laughs> with having briefly dated Donald Trump. At one stage, I was like, oh, maybe I could be the ambassador. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get through to him now, though. Bryce Gibbs from the Crows. What sort of discussion have you had about potentially playing this week? My mid-season review was really positive, which was great. All of the coaching staff were really happy with my last month, my attitude, my form in the NFL. Gave me a lot of confidence knowing that I'm not too far away. I'm lucky enough to be joined by Brad Haddon. He is the assistant coach of the Australian team. I think it's important in tournament play that you're building towards that perfect game at the right end of the tournament. And you don't want to play with the cricket gods. You want to make sure you're kicking all the boxes you need to and building when the big games come, everyone's confident to do their role. Isaac Smith from the Hawks. No, he's pretty good, Clark. I think going with the 4am pier, jump in the water or the uh, bees no, on a bit, bus. Not as yet. day off well, training. I'd, I'd prefer the beers on a bus <laughs> type thing. I reckon I'd react better to that one, but I actually don't mind going down to the pier at 4 a.m. and jumping in either. It's good fun. Makes you feel alive. We've got an assistant coach. So much to talk to Mark McVay about it. Lockie Whitfield, I'm just not sure he quite gets the credit he should for yeah. someone. He's just so good. He does things on the field where you just go, that's incredible what you just did. Unbelievable work rate. Can run all day. His skill is unbelievable. His vision. But the other thing with Lockie is he's very tough. Speculation about a Tasmanian team in the NBL. So we thought we'd have to speak to the main man, Larry Kesselman. Touching growth for next year, but I think it's still a possibility. It depends how quickly this process runs. We're certainly going to try, but it might be a hard ask. It may be the year after. Karen White is in the <laughs> studio with us. I'm starting to grow in confidence with the Aussie team. You've got to hand it to Justin. We barely won a match there for a little while, and we've won pretty much all of the last 20. The game style's looking good. I think we're just building a lot of momentum at the right time. Just bed down this lineup, and geez, we're in with a good show. The Breakfast Club, 6 till 8.30 weekdays on RSN 927. Thanks. Thanks to the tab. Who are you backing? RSN 927 conducts competitions almost every day. Every contest is run according to our general competition rules. There are even competitions which have specific terms and conditions. If you would like to read our general competition rules or any special terms and conditions, look for the links on the competitions page at rsn.net.au or ask for a copy during business hours at the RSN 927 reception desk. The biggest country racing news from around Victoria in the Friday Morning Report. The Country Racing Show. Michael Belgate leads the team from Country Racing Victoria with the stories, the people and the big V best bets. The Country Racing Show. 10am Fridays and later on podcast. 
the Country Footy Show with Paul Daffy. And I by 95 points, and they should have won by about 135. After each round, all the good stuff about the game around Victoria. It's a bit of a dog would win in the end because we're a pretty young group, and everyone probably would have expected the Premiers to run over the top of us, but that one's the case. RSN 927's Country Footy Show with Paul Daffy and Andrew Hughes. There's a fresh podcast up every Monday at rsn.net.au. That's the way football is. Or catch the first release early Monday mornings on RSN 927, analogue, digital and streaming. The verdict. Look, we're just going down an old road here again, but this rule is a complete ass, isn't it, really? I mean, yeah. if you've got a jockey who's worth his salt and he's got a law band of owners, you know, what's three or four more whip, whip strikes to try and get a horse to win? Yeah, he kept cops a suspension or a fine, but in the middle of winter, is that really going to hurt him that much? No, of course it's not. If you're going to have this rule, you've got to have serious ramifications for breaking it. You know, a suspension here and there, a slap on the wrist. I mean, is this is you really going to hurt Damien Oliver? Of course it's not. The verdict. Nine till ten, Monday morning. Mornings, part of Monday's Racing Pulse on RSN 927. Brent Harvey on the Friday Footy Preview. The biggest thing for me, the killer instinct for GWS, they just, they had the game there, it's it's won. You, you were winning the game, you should have won the game by maybe six or seven goals. They just didn't have the killer instinct to go bang like the really good teams do. There's a question mark over the MCG for them, and now there's a question mark for me whether they can finish off games. Set up your weekend football with the one-hour Friday Footy Preview with Half, Whitey, Ralph. And Boomer. 7 a.m. Fridays. Thanks to Creaky Bird Sporting Club. The 30 Minute Trots Report. One out, one back. All the industry news from around Victoria and the people who make this sport happen. RSN 927 joins Harness Racing Victoria for One Out, One Back. Thursday mornings at 10 and then on podcast. Inside Racing, the official magazine of Racing Victoria and Australia's best monthly racing information source. Inside the June issue, the full wrap of the Warrnambool Carnival. All about Payne, Pateman and ZL. There are profiles on Rising trainer David Eustace and gun jockey Dean Holland. Plus the industry section for trainers and jockeys. Subscribe to Inside Racing. Call customer first. 1300 139 401. For advertising, 1300 783 112. Premiership coach Paul Ruse talks teamwork, leadership, and creating a winning culture. One of the smartest minds in football talks about his life and the lessons he's learned. On the next Reclick, Sporting Chance Night, if you're in sport or business, Business, come and learn from one of the best. It's on Wednesday, August 14 at the Hoppers Club. Pelham Drive, Hoppers Crossing. Tickets just $25, but bookings are a must. Call 9419-6672 and join Paul Roos. Reclick, including the unincluded. For the big game this weekend, here's where to meet up. The Mail Exchange Hotel, five minutes walk from Marvel Stadium. Ales, wine, superb food and tap terminals. The Mail Exchange Hotel, it's where the footy fans meet up. Corner Burke and Spencer Streets, City, opposite the steps at Southern Cross Station. The winter issue of Ladies in Racing magazine is out now with Winx on the cover. Inside, an eight-page Winx special packed with stories and photos. Plus, stories on the Wakeful Club's Lady of Racing, jockey Christine Pauls, Jamie Carr, and Harness Racing's fearless Reigns women. Ladies in Racing, for those who love the glamour and stories of females in racing. Six issues, starting with the winter edition, for only $59, including postage in Australia. Call 1300-783-112 or see ladiesinracingmagazine.com.au. Every day, in many ways, the Royal Flying Doctor Service takes the finest care to Australia's furthest corners so that all Australians can enjoy the best of health. The Royal Flying Doctor Service has been taking care of Australians for over 80 years. But we still need your help to continue providing emergency rescue and essential health care to remote and rural communities. Make a donation or become a supporter and help keep the Flying Doctor flying. RSN Carnival 2. It's women's RC rules, they're doing what they love. The faster and tough, don't mess with them, cause they can get rough. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you ready for the mess? It's the call of the game, it's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. On RSN Carnival. It's the Half-time at Queen Elizabeth Oval here in Bendigo sees Richmond with a 10-point lead over the Casey Demons. 3-10-28 place, 3-straight-18. As uh, 
You, you, you're right, Coxie. You, 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 you. <laughs> I'm waiting for, what are you doing? Oh, I, I was waiting for you to start talking, then throw to me. I was just looking at you. <laughs> go on, go do what you wanted to do. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> this is how well yeah. it's going today's yeah. show. Um, I, I know I'm supposed to be the banter writer slash producer. Thank yeah, you very and, much. And you're not fulfilling either of those roles. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, here on RSN <laughs> Carnival 2. Hello to everyone that's listening to this very professional <laughs> broadcast. I blame Dan. Um, I just want hang to tell on, everyone that on. next week... <laughs> yeah, the, oh, you it's a, it. And it's a new button as well, so suffer in your jocks. Um, <laughs> we just want to let everyone know, of course, that next week uh, there'll be no Sunday game on air uh, simply because there isn't a Sunday game game in the VFL Women's Competition next week. Uh, for Saturday games, it is T TBC at this stage. We're waiting upon availability of commentators. Our original proposal was to do at 11am Essendon versus Collingwood from Windy Hill, then back up at 3pm for the Western Bulldogs versus Richmond at Witten Oval. Now, at this stage, it's depending if we can get commentators for both. If we cannot, it will most likely then be we'll take Hawthorne versus Geelong from about 10.30am on Saturday, and then we'll be on air at about 3pm Saturday afternoon for the Western Bulldogs and Richmond at VU Witten Oval. So that's what will be happening next Saturday. So Essendon Collingwood fans, we might be doing that game. It's just all dependent upon if we can obviously get enough commentators. Coxie is away for the day, so we're just relying upon some others to see if they can put their hand up if there's availability. Yes, so uh, keep your eyes peeled on the Facebook page and Twitter accounts, WARF Radio. We'll search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. Uh, and by the way, Fern Harrison, uh, Collingwood supporter, GWS supporter, is uh, watching online. She says uh, it's her birthday on Thursday. So happy birthday to her. And uh, you ask for questions, and guess what, people? Okay. They've got none for you. Which we needed the other sound effect, which you've taken Which was wah, 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 but yeah. that's now gone. Um, does that mean we get cake? Well, yeah, that's an excellent question. Fern, cake for us? <laughs> Chocolate mud cake will be fine. I'll, I'll, I'd be happy with well, that. I'm more of a white mud cake uh, sort of person. Some people are snobs. <laughs> half time here at Queen Elizabeth <laughs> Oval here in Bendigo. Some of the better players from the opening half from both sides. Uh, Elise Collette, I'll go to you first. Uh, Make sure the mic's in the correct position. <laughs> hang on, do you, can uh, we fire the intro Hang on, again no, no, this? no. That'll do. <laughs> Go on, carry on. Anyway. The start of uh, this uh, second half has been absolutely superb. So it's far. been shards and hours, and carry on, Elise. <laughs> As I was going to say, um, uh, usual suspect in um, Katie Brennan's uh, definitely been one of the top uh, players. She was a little bit quieter in that second quarter, but they had other key players like... Um, Keck, McCurch, what? Um, I keep looking down the list. Laura Bailey and Jenna Colwell, despite the um, what we suspect she's been reported, and it's been a good all-round performance from Richmond. It's interesting to see also, Brennan, back almost in an old traditional role near centre half four, which she dominated for years at Darabin, where quite. Quite possibly she won't be playing that role once it comes to the AFLW. She's already indicated she would prefer more midfield time, something that she didn't get at the Bulldogs. And it's also where does uh, Taylor Stall fit into the picture? Because at the moment she's been the key lead up forward for Richmond. But that could well and truly change come AFLW when Sabrina Frederick comes into the side. Because Sabrina Frederick is that build where you're going to go right, plonk on the goal square, big body, big target, try and move her. It's, Pete, it's what happened to the what happened to the hyphen? The hyphen. Has the hyphen been removed? For who? Uh, or is yes. her name still... No, yes. is, there still, is she still Frederick Traub? Oh. Yes, yes. No, no, she's dropped the Traub. She's now just Sabrina Frederick. Okay. Just checking. That was announced via the Richmond website about a month and a half ago. Very good for those of you at home. There are some people that they do it a lot in rugby league where they drop the, the hyphen off. You can't do that. If it's their last name, it's their last name. You can't do half of it. There's going to be a reason. <laughs> oh, well, there may be. You know, I'm not going to ask her. She wants to be called oh. Sabrina Frederick. She'll be called Sabrina well, Frederick. No, I was just clarifying for those at home yeah, who yeah. were sort of, you know, uh, wondering. And I'm clarifying now. I wasn't laughing uh, then at what you were saying. <laughs> <I was laughs> yeah, you know I was to get hey. in trouble for it. <laughs> it was all over you like a sock. What, he wanted <laughs> to hit me? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looked like. <laughs> I was just trying to see if your microphone was turned on. Someone had made a comment saying, Some, one of you needs to turn your mic on. They really want to hear me, do they? <laughs> hey, you know, our old commentary team motto, the more you drink, the better we sound. And the way we've started this second half, we're off to a flyer. I'll let you uh, take over and bring some civility back to the uh, 
Commentary position. Yeah, don't think we're going to get that. 3 10 28 Richmond leading Casey. Three straight 18. About to get the third term underway. It's turned cold grey. If we get a bit of rain, it'll become miserable here at uh, Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. It was beautiful sunshine when we arrived, but that's disappeared for the day by the looks of things. Oh, it's a great afternoon for football. You've painted a beautiful picture, Coxie. Everyone's feeling really good about themselves and, this afternoon. And the rain has arrived. Next to the heater at home. Probably the most intelligent position. Ball tossed up. It'll be Casey going to the right of your dial and Richmond to the left. Casey to the city end. Again, Richmond look to surge the ball forward out of the centre. Umpire, though, decides to call for it. And as you said, Coxie, a bit of misty rain coming across the Queen Elizabeth Oval as it's uh, tossed back up. Again, the tap from Windbanks this time. She goes into Look after it now, Sheriff. Little hack kick towards half forward. Coming out for Casey is McDonough. She goes back into the mud. Oh, not a smart decision. Then got the hand to Winbanks, who took them on, umpire. And will be holding the footy. No. Bit of uh, a bit of a bailout. Fair enough. No prior. Be a bounce attacking side of centre. Casey are in attack. Only just. Richmond did their best attempt to try and get it out. Good tackle laid on. The umpire's... I was say it was a slinging tack. I think it's Sheriff that's come off second best. It was almost like he waited for the impact and then decided, oh, she's winning a free kick. It was a late call. <laughs> we'll wait for the outcome rather than the action. Why not? Sheriff puts it straight to centre half forward. Ball off hands. Popping out, chasing after it is Cordner. Back heel. Now I've seen it all. Brennan. back heeled that, Coxie. I was looking down at my team sheet. She back heeled Kennedy. it. Quarter. It was a turnover. I was back heeled to six Richmond players. But it was inventive. Uh, man, if it gets, it gets the ball forward, why not? I'll have to check the replay on our live video stream, facebook.com, if you want to watch today's game. Richmond in the middle of the ground. Monaghan flick the handball to Brennan. Gets around traffic and puts the ball towards the outer side. Again, good work from Shelley Heath. Been doing it all today for Casey. Pop the handball out. Under pressure there was Dyson. They work it by hand here, Casey, and then just get a high hoping kick in the middle. In the glue pot, able to take the mark. McDonough goes towards centre half forward with the kick. Great mark. Intercepted by the Tigers there in Sarah Last. Kicks it out wide towards Rebecca Miller, who is a short person trapped in a tall person's body. She's got skills. Lovely kick out wide. And marking on the chest in front of us is Grace Campbell on Wolf Radio. Decides to take the player on the mark on. Oh, bit of a don't argue. Ducked the head, got away with it. Now kicks up towards half forward. Coming out was Colwell. Couldn't take it. All under the pack. Chance here for Ben Felsen. She can't get it clear. Hacked forward by Paterno. All pinballing around and now it's cleared by Sheriff. Up towards half forward. Shoved underneath, it might have been Tatterson. Now Richmond working towards halfback, but Casey do have numbers here. Little handball to McDonough. She gets it out wide. It's a two on three against Casey inside their attacking 50. Zanka pushed a couple off. Dodged, weaved, looking for a teammate. Hacked it into the middle. Chance here for Johnson. Couldn't pick it up cleanly. Got the hands away and now to be holding the footy. And Richmond, they defended grimly and they did enough. They'll have the ball inside their defensive 50, freaking against Nicole Garner. Casey just looking a little more attacking than what they did in the first half in the opening stages of this third quarter. High ball in the Brennan direction, had two to beat. Front spot for Casey, and then having to apply the tackle there was Pratt. Up against the boundary line, Tigers get a relieving kick. Stall, hacks it off the carpet, good kick. Mark taken here by Colwell. Attacking side of the broadcast wing as the rain gets a little heavier here in Bendigo. Makes the ball a little slippery. Jacobson hovering. Has to go in to try and extract it. Is unable to. The umpire says, give it to me. I'll ball it up. Our match analyst today, Elise Collett. Your early impressions from the start of this third quarter. They're very even so far. Yeah, as you were alluding to earlier, Casey uh, are doing a lot more of the attacking. But they just haven't been able to convert and get that easy mark and then be able to go for the shot. So they'll um, they'll have to try and do that as it appears Richmond are going forward again. Grace Campbell gets it out wide through the arms of Jess Kennedy. She then paddles along in front of herself for two on two out wide. Jess Kennedy again. Could have been hung on to. Now the pack 
merges and forms. And the umpire will call for it, or is it going to be ducking? It was. Ducking, a.k.a. prior opportunity, free kick to Casey. Richmond have set up really well here. And that's why they're going to switch the play. So Emerson, right back pocket, has a few ahead. Well, she only really has one ahead, in fact. And that's Tennille Nash. Well, now Jacobson, right back pocket, runs away, around the wing, kicks to a two on five. Oh. And part of the two was Nicole Garner, who stood in the middle of the pack and took the mark. Now again, she has to kick up the line where Richmond have the numbers. Zanka, she's one out. Couldn't take the mark. Possibly held on to. Bursting her way through was Alicia Johnson. Run down. Could have been in the back late. But the umpire happy to pay the free kick to Richmond. And it'll be Hannah McLaren at left half back. Brings the ball up. Just slipped through the fingers there of Grace Campbell. Tigers just pressure the ball forward. Emerson now under pressure. Stealing it was Holding Jacks. On. Holding yeah. on. Free kick. Casey. Free kick will go the way by the looks of things to Emerson. Just waiting for the ball to be brought back to her. Defensive side of the broadcast wing. They trail by 10 points. The Demons. Early stages of the third term here at Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. Emerson pops it down the line. Slipped through the fingers of Grace Egan for Richmond. Ball over the boundary line and out of play. We'll throw it in. Just over six minutes gone, third term. 3-10-28 plays three straight, 18. Listening to the VFLW match of the day through RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio through WARFradio.com, the VFL app, and a live video stream today through Facebook.com forward slash WARFradio. Richmond get the clearance, but it goes back towards the line. And now a chance for Grace Campbell. Dodging and weaving. Big Shepherd laid on. In there for Richmond. And then the turnover being very, very good. There's Casey Sheriff up towards full four. Big fly from Zanka. Couldn't take the mark. For the footy. Numbers with Richmond. Hands out the back. Sarah last. If you're not first, you're last. She got the hands out very, very wide. Now the kick is not a great one because Casey do have the numbers. Four on one. But Brennan, she's the one. A handy one. Now it's knocked back by Windbanks for Casey. Ball at right half four. Little kick around the corner. It's a good one. Clearing kick. Melanie Hogg had it. Lost it. Went back and got it. Then hacked it forward only a couple of metres. Inside attacking 50 now for Casey. Richmond, though, with the numbers. Work it clear. Grace Egan, back pocket, comes back in board. Not a great kick turned over. Good mark from Casey Sheriff at right half forward for Casey. Loads it up towards full forward, looking for Zanka. Numbers all, though, with Richmond. And going back to take a nice mark was Gabby Seymour for the Tigers, the 23rd player, who's... Done a lot of the ruck work today. She'll poke it down along the boundary line, searching for a kick. McCur Chout did her best. Standing in front, though, was Pratt for Casey to send it back inside, attacking 50, looking for Zanka again. Went up for the fly, went through her. Hogg, sitting underneath it, took the mark. Just Mal Hogg just saunters back to She said, I got this in the bank. Don't worry about that. I'm not passing. And looking at the windsock here at uh, QEO, it is dead flat at the moment. Bit of me time here for Mal Hogg. Didn't even look at all. She comes in, slow and steady approach, puts it on its way. It's fading to the right-hand side. It's a good effort. There's a reason she went back. Yep. It was looking good off the boot, but it just swung late. Their first blemish of the day too, Casey. 3-1-19 plays 3-10-28. Approaching eight and a half minutes third term here on RSN Carnival. Restart, Kate Dempsey, her first... Involvement in the game today. Went out wide towards Brennan. Turnover. Little kick off the ground from Corder. Gets over the back. Zanka deserves a goal. And gets one. Yeah. So the pressure tells. Yeah, great work there from Zanka just to weave out the back and then um, kick through. And great reward for effort there for Casey. They've done a lot of the attacking in this third quarter, but they just haven't been able to score. So it's... Um, be glad to finally get a goal on the board. Took nine minutes. They're on the board. Margin closes to three points. Richmond 3 10 28. Casey, they've got more goals. 4 1 25. They trail by three points. And you just have this sense that Casey hang around. Anything's possible. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're just hanging around. Yep, doing what they need to do. And this is uh, a home deck for Eden Zanka, from, originating from the Bendigo Pioneers. So it looks like we're going to get a warning. 
for uh, the six by six by six rule. Eden Zanka taken pick number six in the 2017 draft from the Bendigo Pioneers. So would have played most of her under 18 footy on this deck. Actually, probably wouldn't have been because it would be cricket season in those early days of the under 18 competition. Brennan, half forward. Lots of half time games. You know, uh, when you're playing Oz Kick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan. As Richmond. Off the centre wing, Smith, ball towards half forward, bounced past Bailey, Jacobson, a little Ooh. indecisive with what she wanted to do with it, opened an opportunity for Monaghan, got a little shove as she went over the boundary line and out of play. Pye says we'll throw it in. Nine and a half remaining, third term, 28 plays, 25. Richmond lead, but haven't done much of the attacking in this third term. Casey having momentum at the moment. Not able to get a clear exit from this stoppage. Doing well, Gab Seymour. Eventually popped the handball out to Egan. They get it to Akek Makur Chewett, who just runs inside 50, unloads from 50. It's offline. There's a free kick going the way of Casey. A bit of holding, I believe. The advantage is taken, and the mark will be taken here on the broadcast side by the Demons. Clayton goes around the outer wing, kicks to a two on five. And one of the five for Richmond was Gabby Seymour, the 23rd player standing up, wants to give the hands to Egan. Does, selling a bit of candy, going this way than that, Grace. It's a little short ball, it's a nice ball to Jakes, who kicks towards half forward and directly turns it over, straight to Sheriff. Casey for Casey. Casey Sheriff, she gets it back and then gets to a, a three on none and somehow McDonough couldn't take the mark and now a high tackle will be a free kick to Casey. They'll get out of it, likes of fortune. And have it on the back side of the square. They've got someone on out wide. It's Nicole Garner, decide to go further afield. Oh, off the chest down there of Brianna Pratt. Has to go back and mop up, does. Rolls it towards half forward. Bouncing ball, good hands up and quality work there from... Weber, who's Casey's 23rd for today. She gets it inside, attacking 50. Zanka paddles it along in front, don't tell me. From the angle. Oh, oh narrow. Oh, that, <laughs> it could have been an all-timer. She decided to go with the drop punt. Had the Eddie Bet snap written all over it. Marching uh, back to two points. She can, be, she can be a dangerous player at times, Eden Zanka. And that would have been one of the goals of the year if they had gone through. She's been lively in this third term. And had a good game as well for Casey. Richmond Ooh. bring the ball wide. It's not going to be touched. Campbell unable to lay claim on it. Is that not a rule anymore? Depends on the um, on the level, because I think that might be a rule in like uh, in, in local level. I'm pretty sure that's a, um, that's a rule a in our league. But that's still a kick in, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, well, I thought maybe that was missed. Zanka puts the handball. Kennedy. Tried to get the intercept, had to keep paddling it in front of herself. Monaghan now applies the tackle. We'll get a stoppage just outside, attacking 50 for the Casey Demons. They trail by two points. We've got about six and a half minutes remaining in this third term. Ball tossed up. Again, they go the joust, the two ruck women. This time it was Seymour winning it down. Ball goes back under the base of the pack. Crowd happy with the tough work inside. Being done by Grace Campbell. Doesn't mind a tackle or three. Again, the joust is on. It's one down by Richmond. Seymour again. Another big tackle laid on. Monaghan goes in, kicks it up towards half forward. Colwell gets the hands out. Grace Egan takes off, run down. Umpire waves play on, got the handball away in the nick of time. Good smother laid on. Casey defending really well today. Another smother here from Monaghan. Smothered the kick of Sheriff. Great now, tackle. Egan goes in, might have been dumped. Umpire probably blindsided. In fact, it was Grace Campbell. She's been under a few packs and has the has the mud all over the Guernsey to show for it. We'll have a ball up left half forward. Doing her best attempt to wear Richmond's uh, home Guernsey by the looks of things. Ball squeezed out. It's the way of the Tigers and Miller releases Kennedy through the middle. She's going to pop it up. Hard of attacking 50 for the Tigers. Milford takes the mark. 
Point blank range. Looks confident. Point blank. Well, almost. Jeez, you're a better kick for goal than I am. This is my worst spot. Terms Anywhere other than this. 35 yards straight in front. You've got to think about it too much. She's put it on her way. So point blank range. <laughs> oh, never in doubt. It was good work there from Bridgman, though, to find to find the, the free player in Kennedy and um, to work it into their 50 and uh, a good kick. And yeah, Casey have just got to make sure that there are no free players that close to the 50. So Because even if they have one player on Kennedy, that could have been very different. So 14-34, Richmond, they move to Casey 4 to 26. We've got about four and a half minutes remaining in this third term. So are they allowed, Casey, are they, their wing, wing woman is literally at half back, but she's on this side of the square. Is she allowed to stand there? Is that what they got warned for before? No, no, Bre Brennan was running inside 50. Okay. So she was caught out of position. Okay, so Casey got the plus one. They're allowed to do that. They don't have to be directly on the wing for the zones. No. All good. All up towards half forward for Casey. Probably their first centre break of the game that went the right way. Yes. Of course, in the second quarter, they got one that went the wrong way. So things, things improving for Casey. But uh, Richmond will repel from the last line, switch the play out wide towards Miller, who, as I said, is a short person trapped in a big person's body because she's about 6'6 six, six and has got all the skills in the business. She loads it up, although <laughs> put the moz on. That's an absolute tumbler. That's a ruck woman's kick. That was, a, that was a shocker. Up towards full forward now for Zanka. Casey, they work it inside towards the top of the goal square, but numbers back for Richmond. They've done this well, Richmond. They've just dropped one back to slow things down. It's a bit of an ugly switch, but should be able to track it down over there, Kate Dempsey. Out of the back pocket. They've got numbers here, Richmond. Mark will be taken by Davey. Still inside defensive 50. Now this is a risky one. Brennan has a lot of work to do. Has supporting Kennedy. Didn't have the footy. Umpire said play on. Zanka, head over it. Kennedy soccers danger. it, but it'll be in danger. And a free kick will go the way of the Demons on that outer side. <coughs> Kirkwood, ball in hand. Given the hurry up, she's going to load it up. Long ball inside 50 here for Casey. Comes out the back. Hogg trying to lay claim on it. The umpire says, we're going nowhere and I'll ball it up. Deep inside 50 here for the Demons. Zanker a little sore. She's shaking it off and she says, ah, oh, screw it, I'll go up in the ruck here. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, she looks like she's clutching her arm there, so fingers crossed it for Casey. It's not anything too severe. Emerson dragged down, lost control of the footy. Monaghan relieving kick out of defensive 50, searching for stall. Has a lot of work to do, just paddles it back into the hands of Monaghan. Wax boot to ball, searching for Bailey on the outer wing. She's got a lot of work to do, beaten to the contest. Kennedy arrives for support. She got thrown off the footy, but the umpire says incorrect disposal well, was it that or did uh did holly bailey get dealt with for casey after she got rid of it either way casey goes towards half forward they're caught we should get another stoppage all just bubbles out though right there should have been a stoppage there coxie but they have let it go all day brennan says oh well my time comes through a bit of don't argue work hacks it round the corner bouncing footy out there for laura bailey paddles it along in front quick hands up was good but now the pack forms around it and the umpire says you had prior opportunity over there grace campbell and i love the mud on the guernsey and your work but free kick against you <laughs> and casey will have it on the outer side just defensive side of center called to go low ball around the outer side into the arms of zanka out marks brennan so gave a little look in the eye as well as if to say this is the new and the old <laughs> zanka up towards full forward, ball gets to the back of the pack. Lots of numbers for Richmond. One on six against Casey. Now the Casey players come and form on the footy. Ball hacked across the face of goal from McCure Chot. It's a nice ball though, Dempsey. She comes up with it. Forced to kick around the corner. Good defensive pressure there from Nicole Garner. Gets it towards left half back. Ball bubbling around again. <laughs> That's Grace Campbell again. She cannot get away from any Ooh. tacklers and a big collision laid on. Group involved Grace Campbell again. Surprise, surprise. Ball now gets kicked towards the wing. Chance here for Jakes. She gets it back towards the centre. Dangerous ball. Although couldn't come up with it. Got it lost in her feet, Kirkwood. 
And now Richmond, with a few numbers, through the agency of Kennedy, look to kick it up to the wing. As McCure Truett on the centre wing broadcast side, she slips over on the soft deck. Ball in dispute. We should get a ball up. The umpire circling, shaping, going to ping, holding the footy. Dived on it. Free kick the way of the Demons. They're going to run out of time here in the hands of Zanka. Decides to lob it up. No advantage. Three-quarter time, an enthralling contest here at Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. 4-10-34, Richmond leading Casey 4-26. Goal kickers at three-quarter time for the Demons. Emerson, Sheriff, Zanka and McDonough, whilst for the Tigers, Brennan, Bailey, Stahl and Milford, the goal kickers there. There's a little change in that third term at least, Colette, from... Richmond doing all the attacking, to Casey doing all the attacking, and it seems as though the side attacking, they can't convert. Yeah, that's very true. And uh, the th uh, I guess what the thing is, uh, Richmond, with all their attacking in the opening half, was still able to score like in terms of points, but Casey just struggled to score anything for the majority of that quarter, despite having the ball the majority of the time in their 50s. So, uh, and... Particularly towards the end, though, they were they did really well to um, keep the defensive pressure up to keep to lock the ball in their fifty. It's just a pity that um, they weren't for them that they weren't able to yeah, convert. Just looking at uh, Eden Zanka having a chat with the physios, getting a bit of work done collarbone region, and from the arm movements that she was uh, describing with the physios, it seems as though it was a collision in a ruck contest that that injuries come from. So. Hopefully we'll see her back on the deck at, in the final term and it's going to be a ripper because at three-quarter time, Richmond to 4-10-34, leading the Casey Demons 4-2-26. Stick around on RSN Carnival 2 Digital Radio and also through Facebook.com, our live video stream. Uh, search for Women's Australian Rules Football Radio. What a week we had on the Late Show. Well, first there was Monday, then there was Tuesday, then there was... Wednesday. No, seriously, we had a great week. Great guests, good fun, the Culinary World Cup. We did it all this week, and if you missed any of it, you can check it out on the podcast part of the website. Make sure you do that. Enjoy your weekend. I'm going to rest up and then be back uh, with a vengeance. 11 o'clock, Monday night. Hope to see you then. On RSN 927. There's jumpers, hoodies, and tees for you at leagetees.com.au. Leagetees.com.au is your place for retro footy gear with designs created by local artists that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, their unique range of women's footy tees help raise funds for Indigenous literacy programs. Get online and start shopping today. Leagetees.com.au. The smell of baking. Routley's Bakery is so good. Why not grab a Routley slice to go with your coffee? Make it a classic apple slice, a bee sting, or a vanilla slice. That's absolute custard heaven. You can make a move on a muffin or go all the way and bite into a wicked Nutella donut. Routley's Bakery's right across Geelong, as well as Eltona, Newport, Williamstown, and Ascot Vale. Fancy a Routley's pie? Of course you do. Your club, Craigie Burns Sporting Club. The Sporty is now your prime function venue. The breathtaking new function room is now open. Already it's hosted wedding receptions, engagement parties, christenings, birthdays and seminars. Up to 300 guests. And the reviews have been awesome. Why not make an appointment with the Sporty Function team to plan your special occasion? Craigie Burns' best functions are now happening at the Sporty. Craigie Burns Sporting Club. Find out more at craigieburnsc.com.au. Or SN Carnival 2. It's the VFL Women's Match of the Day. Welcome back to Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. Three quarter time. Richmond have the advantage, but it's not a convincing one. 4 10 38 plays, 4 2 26. Elise Collette. Uh, in fact, no, we might go straight down to ground level, emerging. From uh, the huddle there is Pete Holden, who uh, encroached to the uh, the circle there of oh. VIP access there. Right? <laughs> Just to um, have a listen to Tom Hunter. 
you've eventually talked about getting the fist in there, creating the contest, and more than anything about rotation, saying you wanted to see positions changed every two to three minutes. He said it's all about having fresh legs in this final quarter. That's an interesting tactic there from uh, from Richmond. Yeah, I guess fresh legs are important. You've got to make sure that you've got to run out the game. And you, you don't... Um, if you get too tired, it gets very hard to play. But it's, it's... I find it fascinating how much it changed, how much the momentum changed, because Casey were grinding out the game in the first half, and then they just looked sharper, quicker yeah. in that yeah, third quarter. Whether Richmond went into defensive mode, I, uh, but they didn't quite look like it had gone to that much of an extent that they'd locked the game down. It was more they just didn't get their hands on the footy. Yeah, and uh, the interesting to see what the, the mentality was at half-time is... Yeah. I, I can understand about the fresh licks because if you actually go out there, I mean, it looks picturesque if you're watching through the camera on our Facebook stream, the ground besides obviously the mud patch around the cricket pitch area, but it's actually a long grass and it's a very soft underfoot, so that would have really taken out a lot of the players today. Very. How far would the uh, Tony Greg Keys have gone in there, Pete? <laughs> Quite a while, maybe... Uh, I tell you what, uh, you'd probably put the high hills on, and I reckon the whole uh, back hill of a stiletto would go down. It's a very, very soft ground. Yeah, it is. It is. It's deceiving looking at it from our vantage point, but when I was walking out there a little earlier, there's a lot of moisture underneath the turf. Uh, particularly around the uh, interchange uh, area, if you're just wearing normal dress shoes, let me tell you, very slippery. <laughs> bit disappointed that you didn't go uh, over while you were out there, Pete. Oh, no, no, I'm very good at my feet. I was a very good forward pocket back in the day. <laughs> it's not what I heard. Uh, as the Darabin Falcons come from the ground, they've got a reserves match coming up following this one against the Bendigo Thunder, uh, who are also just making their way off the ground. We're welcome back downhill to the commentary box. You were at the Casey Huddle at three-quarter time. Basically, it was we lost all structure. No, I was at Richmond's. You were really. We were both at Richmond. <laughs> I've messed that up, haven't I? <laughs> what was the message, Pete? We'll see how close we were. <laughs> it was about putting the fist in there, making the efforts, and about rotations every two or three minutes. We said we we're going to swap huddles, you peanut. <laughs> yeah, so the Casey huddle, they just said, keep doing the same things. We'll hopefully get a result. Ball's up and down in the centre of the ground in the meantime. Zank has been moved into the ruck. Got the hands clear. Lovely little handball there to court up. Got it up towards half forward. Coxie's going to have to compose himself here. He's under deep pressure. Cody Capers in the box. Shocked me. Richmond looked to work it outside the defensive 50. Brennan gives the hands. And then wanted it back around the outer side. Cool shot, couldn't take the mark. Now she's under immediate pressure. Ball will be bounced. In between wing and half forward, out of side. In positive news, it looks like um, Eden Zanker's injury wasn't too severe because she's started on the ground in the final quarter. I saw Gallus went to the huddle for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just sitting here being observant. <laughs> <laughs> Whack. <laughs> Ball out wide. Sheriff hacked it forward. She's been really good. Started in the goal square and is... Pretty much kicked the first goal, and then it was like, oh, well, she's on, put her in the midfield. I haven't seen her inside the 50. So, ball out wide, and is deliberate against Richmond. Why not? We've paid everything else today. So, Zanka will have it out of side. Attacking side of that outer wing, she'll light up for a long ball, and, geez, it's a roost. And, oh, almost worked out. Does now to Cordner. Up against the boundary line, got dumped as she tried to get the kick away. It'll be all wrapped up. And in fact, no, pushed over the boundary line. So we'll throw it in, forward pocket out of side for the Demons. They're 4-2-26, trailing Richmond 4-10-34. Early stages, final term here on RSN Carnival 2 on your digital radio through warfradio.com, the VFL app and a live Facebook video stream today through the Women's Australian Rules Football Radio Facebook page, all wrapped up. We'll toss it up about 45 metres out from goal for Casey. The tap will land up in the hands here of Eden Zanka, just outside attacking 50. Good kick in board, came off hands. Front spot there was Bent Velzen, couldn't lay claim to it. Ball back over the boundary line and out of play. Defence a bit better from Richmond to start this quarter. 
Seem to be letting a lot of balls get over the back in the third term. Ball tossed back in. Again, Seymour the tap. Used her head on this occasion, then went back and got it. McCord shot. Got it around the outer side. Laura Bailey can't quite extract it out. Umpire will call for it. Right on the centre wing, outer side. Richmond lead by eight points. Three gone, final term. Ball thrown up, a little bit of a delay. Now it goes up. And again, it's won by Seymour for Richmond. And bursting her way through, Grace Campbell. Got the hands in board. Wheeling and dealing in there is Rebecca Miller. She handballs it out wide. Good tackle laid on. Umpire circles and says, we'll have another bounce. Out of side. From the last bounce, we've progressed about a metre towards Richmond's goal. It's been the uh, stop-start early stages final term. Brennan lays the tackle on and we'll get another stoppage. Elise Collette, our match analyst today. Yeah, as you were saying, it's been yeah, a bit of a stop-start. But I guess you could say it's been a bit of a stop-start game all afternoon. There's been a lot of... Um, uh, bounces around the ground. Love to see the stat on that, actually. Real arm wrestle. As we should get another one here. The umpire says, give it to me, I'll ball it up. Just as it edges closer to that mud in the middle of Queen Elizabeth Oval here in Bendigo. Round 8, VFLW action. Richmond currently undefeated, but they're under a bit of pressure against Casey Zanka. Played a magnificent game. Got the ball in the hands of Emerson, whose kick was smothered. McCook shots in a race with Sheriff, and she wins out here for the Tigers. Puts the ball towards half forward. It's a bobbling ball for Colwell. Lost control of it. It's socket inside 50. Bailey overran it. Casey, oh, they get caught. They get caught. Umpire says, give it to me. I'll ball it up. Benefit of the doubt. Stall, stall got Sheriff there. All fair in the play, but blindsided her and got her. Good, good old-fashioned shepherd. Ball tossed up, left half forward for the Tigers. Ball bobbles around underneath the pack. Now again, a chance for Grace Campbell. She's been in everything, and she has absolutely no willingness to give the first handball. She wants to bounce off a couple first. Goes in again, but this time turned it over. Casey looked towards right half back and still down on the outer side is Casey Sheriff with a wind. Absolutely well and truly knocked out of her sails. Meanwhile, just nearby, Melanie Hogg has the footy. Kicks it in board towards McDonough. Now around the outer side. It's a poor kick. And it's turned over the numbers with Richmond. And possibly look to move the ball into the centre of the ground. Not a terrific kick there from Tamara Smith. But Phoebe Monaghan has the footy. And a long searching kick to Miller. Takes it attacking side of the centre square for the Tigers. Jested 50 ahead of her. Oh, had three players that she could have used. Instead decides to do it all herself. Runs to 52 metres out. Long ball. Top of the goal square. Unable to take the mark. It's going to be socket through from Bailey. Unable to take the mark was Grace Campbell. Had support in Laura Bailey who was able to soccer it through. A handy goal for the Tigers early in this final term. They move to 5-10-40. Casey 4-2-26. Elise Collette. That's a buffer now. Yeah, they're, they're not a match winner, I would I would argue. Um, Casey have been um, quite strong. They just, yeah, um, let that one slip through. But, yeah, don't rest on your laurels yet, Richmond. It's Rebecca Miller. Just a bit of candy. Why not? Went in run. And had four players that were standing around her that she could have dished the handball off. Said, nah. Well, she did draw. Oh, she's going to handball this. Played for the handball. She didn't handball it. <laughs> Zanka's been moved into the ruck. Can't win the hit out again. It's Seymour. She's been terrific. Casey, though, the clearance towards half forward. And front position was Tamara Smith. Knocked it down. Now out wide, Grace Egan. She can wear the fluoros next week. She's got class. Although she's got a couple hanging off her here. Got the hands out, though. Very classy handball. And the clearance for Richmond towards half forward. Corwell took the mark in the mud. Wants to get the handball away, decides to kick McCourt shot. She streams inside oh. the 50, a bounce. Why not? Went in Rome, as they say. Goes for goal. It gets over the back. Stall takes the mark. Wasn't a pass, I don't think. But all the same, lands in the arms of Stall, who will be forced onto her angle. Good footy from Richmond. Yeah, and they were just able to get, um, get some space on their defenders there. And um, somehow, a little bit... 
lackluster defence there from Casey, but um, let's see if uh, Stahl's able to convert here. So Stahl, the helmeted one, thinks her way through it. Right foot snap. He's a good oh. one. <laughs> good kick. And as she had the shot as well, she undid the chin strap. Just, I don't know, maybe release the jaw for a bit of creative freedom. And she kicks the goal. Good so goal. It was a good goal, and I'd say, Alice, are we putting the nail in now? Oh, uh, maybe next goal. I'm, oh. I'm not going to call it yet. I think that's still 12 minutes. But they that's need still four plenty goals. of time. That is a good point. I think that's the bias demon supporter starting to come out in Elise Collette here in the commentary <laughs> no, box. Just... Can happen quickly. Players <laughs> are tired. It's a big anything, round. anything can happen. 16:46. I can't remember who it was, but someone mentioned it in a previous week. Anything, anything can happen. Richmond 16-46, Casey 4-2-26. Zanka, Zanka won the tap down and then had to apply the tackle. Going to get a ball up. Seymour caught with it. As Dan said, has done incredibly well in the ruck for a 23rd player today for the Tigers. Played her first game last week in Darwin. So she's had a few road trips for her first two VFLW games. The ball's just being shoveled around again. She had it momentarily here, Seymour. Got caught. Bit of punt road wouldn't be bad. <laughs> Early in your career, something local, no, be nice. Can't do that. Zanka, oh, stole it beautifully out of the rucks. Going to put it inside 50 here for the Casey Demons. A bouncing ball for Bent Velzen. Couldn't take it cleanly. Richmond will clear defensive 50, searching for Egan. Couldn't take the mark. Goes back in after it. Extracts it. Flicks the handball out. Kennedy. Gives a handball quickly. High ball for the Tigers towards the centre wing. Broadcast uh, outer side is good. Ibrahim. Takes the mark and comes in board. McCure Chuit takes it. She's a good user, McCure Chuit. And after initially wanting to go sideways, she goes inside 50 with a kick. Bailey being harassed. Jacobson under pressure. Stall arriving. And we'll get a ball up deep inside 50 again for Richmond, who are just starting to run away with it now here at Bendigo's QEO. Ball be tossed up. Left half forward. Stall the ruck work. Caught out of position. <laughs> Knocked over the back. Grace Campbell. Again, looking for bodies to bounce off, because that's just Grace Campbell's MO. This time, though. She decides to kick to Seymour, who gives the hands to Egan, who decides, oh. well, let's go around a couple, then kicks a little snapping ball to Brennan. That's why she's got the fluoros on. I was critical early. That was classy. Little 20-metre end on ender just to the advantage of Brennan. And she'll have it 35 metres out with a player on the mark. He's 40 out, probably. She'll kick from about 45. You'd back her from here, surely. Real sort of me time as well from Katie. The full hamstring uh, stretch into the sock. Real possibility she could kick this not only through the goals, but back over the green fence. She could probably kick it over the... Um, is that thing? The goal rush thing? Um, Homestead? Mine. <laughs> mining wheel thing? The support? The Eiffel Towery mining wheel support yeah, that, thing? That's that, what that, you're going that, for. That oh. thing. What is that? Pete, the Moz, missed away to the left. Absolute flat punch shocker. Yep, and we've One behind. turned his microphone off for the rest of the game. Ball. Sacked, about time. <laughs> Inside 50. <laughs> Daniel just copped a whack over the shoulder. Why do we put him in the back row? No idea. Casey. Oh, dangerous ball. Stall. Bailey now, ball in hand. Tackled by Jacobson. Ball up. Inside 50 for the Tigers. She took that one cleanly. I could hear Coxie going for his pre-rehearsed -re -pre line there. Yep. Stall clicked into third gear. <laughs> <laughs> didn't happen, didn't eventuate. Ball no. tossed up, right half forward. Bit of holding on, Brennan, base of it. McEwen shot, lovely little hands over the top. Paterno had it, lost it. Went back and got it, tripped over. Now gets the hands out to Monaghan who says, well, why not have a shot? Got a little underneath it, and it'll be a free kick to Casey, last line, holding on. And go the way of Georgia McLean. Uh, Casey, who uh, find themselves in a bit of a pickle. It's going to lob one up. A dangerous ball. Front spot. Is it going to be paid to Jax? It isn't. Casey emerged with the footy. Running away. Pratt. High ball in the middle. Chasing after it. Heath. Had support in Johnson. Little toe poke kick. Didn't really go anywhere. She had to apply the tackle in the end and we'll get a ball up. Seven and a half minutes remaining here at Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval. Richmond. 6-11-47 plays 
Casey 4 to 26. As both rucks missed it. Had it out in front of Katie Brennan. This is dangerous. Pops the handball just a little too hot. She'll get it back here, Katie Brennan. Just outside attacking 50. Has to wheel around on her left boot. Good ball to Phoebe Monaghan. Fell into space. Bailey leading up just over her head. Comes out the back. Opportunity here for Milford. Dishes the handball back to Kennedy. That's the nail in the coffin. Yeah, good work there from Richmond. Just to Find the space and um, take that extra second. Make sure the kick or handball was not intercepted. And yeah, that's definitely the nail in the coffin there. A bit of me time from Jess Kennedy too. A bit of Shane Warne finger twirling. <laughs> and uh, another player that hails from this part of the world too. She former captain of the Bendigo Thunder. Former captain of the Bendigo Thunder. Congratulations to her and Jacqueline Graham, who uh, both got married uh, last weekend. Yeah. Good way to bring it in with a sausage roll in the next game. Hopefully a bit of leftover champagne. Sink into that on a Sunday afternoon. If they've got any cake. <laughs> Coxie's eyeing off the cake now. Now, do we have... A, we have an extra? Uh, a 66 issue? Yes, Casey, I think that'll... They had been warned, so... Probably should be a free kick, but they're just going to... No, no one has paid a free kick no. for yet, so they don't really know what it's supposed to be. Well, that's because <laughs> because Richmond were warned earlier. Oh, OK, so you get a warning each. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. When it is actually paid, though, no one would be like, oh, that's what you get for that. Unlike the interchange rule where they were like, free kick from the centre 50 metres, it was like, really? I believe it was paid a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Was uh, it? Casey game? It was too, yes. Was it? Is, where, is there a free kick in the middle? Yes. And 50 or just in the middle? I think it was just in the middle from memory. Okay. Meantime, clearance for Richmond. Out wide, Ibrahim. Pushed off it now, gets the hands back, decides to shrug the tackle. Did she have prior? Umpire says, no, I'll side with you on this occasion. Hannah, and I'll bounce it left half forward. 27 point lead to the Tigers. She's done and dusted here at QEO, but Casey probably deserve another one. The scoreboard doesn't reflect their effort at this stage. And I'll look to come forward here. Numbers back, though, for Richmond. Structured up much better in this quarter. Hands out the back from Miller. Now Richmond towards half forward. Could have been hung on to down there, Ibrahim. Ball bobbling around. Bailey wants a free kick. Then gets a little flick up towards Monaghan. That was very good football. In towards the forward pocket. Out of bounds on the full. Landed on top of the bin. And Bounce should get 20 in. grand for that. <laughs> <laughs> free, free kick to McLean, right back pocket. So, and finds a free player here in Emerson. She's done it. So, what Ramped up. Yeah. Lower leg. Doesn't look too comfortable out there. Well, now the she does. That's better. Long kick from Emerson. Outside defensive 50. Was searching for Johnson. Came off hands. And the Tigers. Zach Campbell again that had ball in hand. Goes inside 50. Going to follow it up here, Campbell. Just looking for someone to hit. Egan ends up with the footy just outside attacking 50. Dishes the handball back. Ball smothered. Well done from Pratt. Got back. caught though. Back. And we'll get a free kick. Sense of occasion. Crowd not too happy with the decision either. I think it was the right one at the end of the day. The kick not fantastic. There'll be a mark on the outer side. It's Dempsey. For the Tigers. Been good, Dempsey. She has and... Fitty. It will be player encroaching the mark. <laughs> the umpire blew the whistle to say hurry up and the player on the mark took that as play on. Whoops. These things happen. One simple mistake. Seen it all too often. So short ball. Oh, Laura Bailey on the lead. Takes a good grab. As far as saying Laura Bailey's one of the best kicks for going in the league. Watch her flat part this out in the full. <laughs> I was going to say, is that going to be a bit of commentator's curse there? The flat pun is back in the last few weeks. It has been back in the wet conditions. Well, then they should be used to it. Bailey comes in. Former Bulldogs player at AFLW le level. That one's good. She stuffed up the run-up, lost all momentum, and then just sort of hacked it. She kicked three goals today, Laura Bailey. Very nice, but yeah, despite this, the apparent stuff up, it, it worked. 
She's a good kick. She is a very, very good kick for goal. And she's one of those ones as well that on this tight angle backs the drop putt. Anyone who does, it's, it's when you know you've got an opinion about your own drop putt. You start, fair enough, do the snaps and whatnot, but it's the confidence you have when you go back. She's always had that. She's got three. Mm. Been a good game. Two minutes to go. I just feel like Casey deserved one here. The scoreboard doesn't reflect we get really a the way this game's gone. Bit of misty rain again. All up and down in the centre of the ground. Seymour, another tap. She's got about 200 supercoach if they're going to advantage. Bustling her way in there is Grace Campbell. And she'll get a free kick. I wonder if she'll take the player on the mark on just for the sake of it. So that's how she rolls. Oh, she, she's actually <laughs> going to. Now she kicks it out wide. We could shot over the back. Controlled oh. it nicely. Streamed towards half forward and wobbled it into the pocket, unfortunately. Just pushes she kicked. Laura Bailey might have got one high. Umpire was right on the spot, said nothing doing. Laura just sits on top of it. The umpire says, I'll call for it. Lucky. I reckon lucky not to give away the yes. high contact free there. Very lucky, and then the follow-up to not be diving on it. It was sort of a, oh, well, six and one, half a dozen, the other, I'll just throw it up. Ball in the forward pocket for Richmond. And now a goal for Stall. <laughs> Very nicely done there, Richmond. A little handball over the top from Colwell. And they're blowing this one out now. Another goal to Richmond. I think they have the last six. 9-11-65, Casey, 4-2-26. Under a minute to go. Probably get the ball back to the centre, but this one, well and truly over, Alice. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll just quickly do the maths here. Um, Casey haven't actually scored this quarter. It's been all Richmond. That's the last five, five. five goals won. It's a zip. Have they had an inside 50? Probably not. Not this term, I don't think. Oh, uh, one. At least one. Yeah. And you felt like that was going to happen in the second quarter, and they held, the, you know, the mm. damn wall, stayed up, stayed up, stayed up, and... In the last, it's just broken, unfortunately. Richmond coming to the fore, as good sides usually do. Heath involved here for Casey. It's going to be a shove in the back. Free kick going the way of the Demons. 16 on, seconds left here. on the clock. Quick handball given off. Ben Velzen. Awkward kick forward. It's going to be okay. Mark taken by Sheriff, who's back on her feet after getting clobbered earlier this quarter. Long ball inside 50. Siren sounds. Richmond end up recording a pretty handy victory after an arm wrestle for most of the day. 9-11-65 plays 4-2-26. The goal kickers today for the Casey Demon, Chantel Emerson, Casey Sheriff, Eden Zanka and Amanda McDonough with all single goals for them. Three goals to Laura Bailey and Taylor Stahl. Singles to Jess Kennedy, Katie Brennan and Imogen Milford. Final score here at Bendigo's QEO. 9-11-65 to Casey 4-2-26 with her thoughts quickly on the game. Elise Collette. Yeah, it was a great win there by Richmond, but um, yeah, things could have been very different. Casey were competitive for most of the afternoon, but they just didn't take their opportunities uh, in the third quarter as compared to their level of attack as much as Richmond did in the first half. And I reckon things could have been very different if that third term had gone more Casey's way. Well, say goodbye to our Facebook stream viewers uh, stick around we're on RSN Carnival 2 for another 10 minutes so join us for the post game show uh, thank you very much though for those watching through facebook.com enjoying a big victory today to the Tigers 9-11-65 to 4-2-26 and for our RSN Carnival 2 WARFradio.com and VFL app listeners we'll 